Thank you, uh, friend. So I'm going to sensitize the audience here um, about the salient features of automated insulin delivery over the next 10 minutes. And uh, also to let you know what work we have done with these devices uh, in India so far in the last two years. Uh, my presentation will have glimpses of the pediatric and adolescent population because that is the age group that I cater to. Uh, so closed loop systems are one of the arms um, on the roadmap for future treatment of type 1 diabetes. When I talk of closed loop, it could be insulin administration in response to glucose sensing or insulin and counter-regulatory hormone administration in response to glucose sensing. The other arm is stem cell derived islet cell transplantation with uh, the need for removal of immunosuppression with micro macro encapsulation with or without gene editing. So this is the future. But what do we offer to our patients as contemporary standard of care are hybrid closed loops. So these are devices which administer insulin in response to glucose sensing. They are paired with continuous glucose monitoring systems. And why do we call them hybrid closed loops and not closed loops? Because still there is avenue for the user to administer the prandial doses uh, while having meals. So carb counting and administering the prandial dose prior to the meal still lies in the hands of the user and hence these devices are known as hybrid closed loops and not closed loops as of yet. What do the guidelines say about using these devices? So automated insulin delivery systems should be offered for diabetes management both to youth and adults alike uh, in patients with type 1 diabetes and initiation early even at the diagnosis could be beneficial depending on persons or caregivers' needs and preferences. So these are the international words. In countries like ours, we often like to add that the person must be in possession of a reasonable degree of knowledge and the resources for him or her to seek access to a center of excellence which would empower him to utilize these devices effectively. What the guidelines do not talk, which I, like to, which I would like to highlight here, is the system is currently approved for patients with type 1 diabetes ages 7 or older. But if you talk to pediatric endocrinologists, all of us have patients as young as 3 who are on the device. The caveat is the child must require at least 8 units of insulin per day for the algorithm to work effectively. And the device cannot be used in an individual who uses more than 250 units per day or maybe even 200 units per day or more. So 8 to 200 units per day usage is the threshold at which the algorithm works effectively. So the very young children may not be prescribed the device out of fear that their total daily dose requirement may be lower. Again, to emphasize in countries like ours, the physician must exercise clinical judgment in cases where you feel the patient cannot follow instructions, when I say patients, patients and parents for younger kids cannot follow instructions on the pump screen, refuse to routinely check glucose, but now with guardian sensor 4, we may not actually need to routinely check glucose, blood glucose for calibration, or patients who are unwilling to announce carbohydrates before eating. They wouldn't be the good candidates to be considered for automated insulin delivery. Now, of the devices available globally, most of the Indian evidence stems from the use of Minimed 780G with sporadic use of Omnipod 5, primarily because the system is not very easily available in India. So most of the data that I'm going to depict comes from the use of Minimed 780G in the last two years. So the salient features, the three salient features that I'm going to emphasize um, of the mini Minimed 780G. The most important one, it is as the ability to regulate basal insulin secretion real time in response to sensor glucose. It does this every five minutes. And in addition to the interstitial fluid glucose that it senses, the other uh, target, the basal target provided by the user or the care provider is the important factor which regulates basal insulin secretion. So there is variable basal insulin secretion throughout the day in response to glucose sensing, and the user is allowed to provide a target ranging from 100 to 120, depending on the need, age, and the clinical profile of the child or the adolescent, to 
uh, determine the basal insulin secretion. The other important feature the device offers is autocorrection boluses. These are delivered when the maximum basal delivery of insulin is reached and yet the sensor glucose is above 120 milligrams per deciliter. So the system offers autocorrection boluses. These could be delivered once every five minutes enabling the sensor glucose to stay within the therapeutic range. All patients irrespective must be initiated in the manual mode for the first 48 to 72 hours for the system to develop personalized insulin delivery patterns after which the device or the algorithm takes over the insulin delivery. However, the arm which is still under the control of the user and the physician is the prandial boluses. So uh, patients do need to administer meal boluses, but the advantage the algorithm offers is it factors predicted future glucose by simulation, looks at the slope, the past slope of the CGM in six hours and the past insulin delivery and might actually mitigate the bolus to prevent a prospective postulated hypoglycemia. So in addition to the actual calculation done by the bolus wizard, the algorithm has the ability to simulate and look back at the slope or the rate of fall of blood glucose in the CGM and the insulin consumed in the last 6 to 12 hours to customize or individualize the bolus that needs to be delivered for the meal. So uh, all of us who treat patients with type 1 utilize formulas of uh, sugar minus blood sugar minus 120 divided by the insulin sensitivity factor plus carbohydrate in grams divided by the insulin carbohydrate ratio. So the Algorithm overrides the formula, the, the numerical derived by the formula, and trust me, most of the times, it's quite righter than the clinician and or the patient. So these are the distinct advantages the algorithm offers. Now, what are the therapeutic goals that we expect when we use automated insulin delivery systems is patients must spend at least 70% of the day in the therapeutic target range of 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter. The glucose management indicator, which is a marker of short-term glycemic control, must be less than seven, if not seven and a half in the younger child. And to achieve this, the prerequisites are that the system must be used at least 85% of the times. So before I uh, demonstrate some data, I'd like the audience to carefully look at a few mark, uh, a few highlights here. The bar in the green is the time in range. The mean time spent by the patient in the therapeutic range of uh, 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter and um, the glucose management indicator which is the uh, indicator of short term glycemic control. Usually glucose management indicator is depicted for a period of two weeks by the algorithm. The three factors that I'd like you to pay attention to is right on the top at the left, the insulin carbohydrate ratio. This is the most important variable which is under the control of the user and the clinician. So automated insulin delivery systems do not obviate the role of the clinician but actually improve the role of the clinician because these settings are under control of the clinician and the user. So the better you optimize the insulin carbohydrate ratio, more astute do your prandial boluses get amounting to better glycemic control. The second most important feature is the basal target that you provide the system varying between 100 to 120 based on which the precision of the basal rate secretion is determined. Third is the active insulin time. The optimal setting used in children and adolescents is usually around two hours unless we encounter frequent hypoglycemias where we like to be conservative and the active insulin time determines the astuteness or the intensiveness of the autocorrection boluses. Now fractioning the total daily dose of insulin into user driven versus system driven and also looking whether the boluses were more contributed by the system or the user also lets the user and the clinician understand the avenue of improvement while using them. Now let me uh, show the audience here real world data from at least 100,000 users globally. So I'm going to talk more of users 
below 15 years of age, they were close to 22,000. And please understand, this is not controlled data. This is real world experience. So patients were at their homes or places of work or school. And if you look at the mean time in range of this cohort of nearly 22,000 individuals, it was close to 70%. And the glucose management indicator being 7%. So both the international consensus goals were easily met in this large cohort of population in the real world setting uh, with no significant incidence of hypoglycemia. So uh, the red lines beneath determine the time below range, which is the time spent by the patient with sugars less than 70 milligram percent. And as per the consensus goals, these must be less than 4% while using automated insulin delivery systems. And when, when the settings were optimized to a more intense basal target of 100 milligrams and an active insulin time, uh, which determines the insulin on board in the circuit, the glycemic control further improved and the mean TIR went up to 76% again with no significant increase in the risk of hypoglycemia, which is extremely critical for us pediatric endocrinologists. And to document consistency of glycemic outcomes, the sensor glucose data was prospectively analyzed for up to a year in these patients each month, and consistency and sustainability of the benefit was well documented in such a large cohort of individuals. Now let me present to you some real world data from our country, which was presented at the ATTD symposium last year. The first set of patients uh, numbered to about 219. And what we saw was the mean time in range of patients of this cohort was about 75.4% with a glucose management indicator of 6.8%. So these numericals mimicked uh, what was found in the real world experience of the Western world. Now, we did, we did subset analysis of a small number of patients to track them longitudinally, and we did see sustainability of the glycemic benefit of these systems right up to month six. I do agree we need much larger numbers and a longer duration of follow-up to say that we have replicated the results seen globally. Now, this is data, uh, a study led by me, specific to children. We analyzed the sensor glucose data of 160 children uh, using automated insulin delivery systems. We presented this at ISPAD last year. And the data mirrored what we saw in the adult population. Uh, the mean time and range uh, of this cohort was close to 71%, and the glucose management indicator hovered around 6.9%. Um, in this subset, uh, in this set of patients. The other observations, uh, though, let me tell you, this was a retrospective analysis, so there was no central control over the settings used across the eight or nine centers which contributed to the study. Um, we were only in control of children who were following up at our centers. Each center was doing its own and using its own uh, settings based on their preferences. The other observations that we had was uh, the algorithm provides much lesser exits. And the most important thing we learned was patients need to use the system for an optimal time to gauge its best benefit. There were no incidences of diabetic ketoacidosis or severe hypoglycemia requiring assistance in this cohort of children. There was obviously an increased average score of diabetes treatment uh, satisfaction questionnaires. So, uh, Yes, so what we learned from our studies were optimal use of the system. Um, naturally, the algorithm has improved from the earlier devices. It provides glucose-sensed uh, basal rates. It has increased time of Umax and Umin insulin delivery. It, it provides automated bolus corrections, uh, which lead to better glycemic control. Optimization of the basal targets to 100 or 110, and active insulin time to two hours improves the glycemic control, and using user's behavior, better carbohydrate counting skills, periodic revision of the insulin carbohydrate ratio, and a structured initiation and training program were the other important factors that were associated with better glycemic outcomes. So to conclude, uh, initial evidence from the real world setting 
in across the globe, including India, demonstrates attainment of international consensus goals amongst users of advanced hybrid closed loop devices. Though in countries like ours, the subsets of patients are extremely heterogeneous. Sustainability of attainment of glycemic metric goals is demonstrated in a subset of patients, though we need larger and longer duration of studies. And number of users attaining these goals can be improved by ensuring adequate usage of the system, provision of optimal settings by clinicians, provision of education regarding appropriate user behavior, and obviously a structured initiation program in addition to continuous ongoing supervision. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.